Hi, this is Glenn Graham, developer at Rastrack. We're going to continue our series here. Uh, this time, instead of talking about navigation, we're going to actually drop, dwell down into uh, what the information you get from GPS tracking solutions. This is going to be very generic. Um, many tracking solutions, including Rastrack, provide this very similar information. Uh, I'm going to show about current information and then I'm also we're going to go down to what called history information. Hopefully I can do this on uh, the browser and then I'm going to have uh, trying to do some captures on an Android uh, phone type application so that you can see the differences between the two. So let's go to our Rastrack site and the uh, demo features here. <clears throat> We'll log in to this again. This is the demo site. Now, in uh, there's two major areas up here. You'll see something called last position. Now, that's the last update that you got from a vehicle um, uh, monitoring device. And then there's track history. And those are the two we're going to do today. I'm going to drop this down and we'll do a little sort here and find. This guy was the last person to report in. Uh, as you can see, this was 11.13, and it's currently 11.12, and he was the last one to report in. Looks like he's not moving. It's probably because he's uh, in a parking lot or something like that. So if I do a find on that, it'll zoom me into where he's at, and I can get a little information about his current conditions and stuff. We can click on this and... It'll show us, you know, it, he's got his engine, uh, odometer readings, uh, he's sitting at zero miles per hour. And that's a little close-up of where he's at. And it looks like he is in a parking lot. Looks like he's probably been sitting there for a little bit. And you, there's no street view available for that area. But that basically gives you, a, you know, the last or the current uh, position of a vehicle or device. Um, depending on how you configure your GPS units, you can have them report very, very little when they're sitting in a parking lot and have them report quite often when um, they're moving. We also have emergency vehicles who, you know, will get just stash reports and turn to text on their units, but when uh, the emergency lights and sirens go on, they go to you know very high speed uh, data you know once every few seconds so that they can know exactly where that vehicle is at, at all times then those are all easily set up with the different modem types that you have for GPS let's go over here and we're going to look at a track I'm going to look at this guy right here let's look at a track for him let's do the last three days and <clears throat> This guy usually moves around quite a bit. We'll see how he he's doing. Takes a little bit to pull up all the history of all. Yeah, you can see he moves around quite a bit. Now, what happens is you have all this information, and each one of these little blips on here has a set of data. Um, like if I click on this guy, He'll pull up, you know, what, where exactly where he's at, his address and the time and the transmission and stuff like that. And we can look a little bit more closely at, at where he's at. But we get this large amount of information. We go, wow, you know, that's just too much. Maybe I should, I'll push this down a little bit. And let's just take a, uh, let's see, I'm going to try a little 12-hour period here. And now I can see on that 12 hours, these were where he goes. And you can kind of see the arrows showing the direction that he's going in and what he's doing. Um, we're going to zoom in a little bit. These little bubbles right here where there's like multiple ones, that they are actually quite a few different reports in that location. You can see this one has two different reports that the uh, GPS device sent in. And that's just, you know, a little bit more, the data is in the same place, so instead of putting a whole bunch of bubbles, a lot of 
uh, companies will make one specific bubble there that you can say, okay, well, there's more here than just that one. But the other things that you can do, too, is when you do a, a history like this, you can see all the different addresses and locations that this uh, vehicle went to. And it's just a long list of exactly what you want to see. The very, what you might call raw data of um, exactly what what's going on with the vehicle. Some people want to eliminate this. And that's why I said some people do like turn detects and not quite as much data like when you're in a parking lot. Uh, like you can tell from this guy, he basically set it up so that when the vehicle's not moving, he's only getting updates once every hour. He's like, I don't really care unless the vehicle's moving. Let's go up a little bit and we find where he's moving. And you can see when he's moving, he's increased the time here. Uh, so it looks like every couple of minutes he's getting an update. Now some people, what they'll put in, one of my favorite things is called turn detect. And what that does is whenever you're going in a straight line, it doesn't say very much. It'll send out like a, a two minute or five minute update. But you know that the vehicle's going in a straight line. And once the vehicle turns at an address or location, that's where it immediately sends a little update. Um, this is um, a way of reducing the amount of data sent and therefore um, maximizing your cost efficiency on you know, those data plans that you have to set up with the cellular providers. Here's a summary of the vehicle's stuff. This is over the period of time we have selected. And it says, you know, his um, mileage and and how much uh, stuff he is doing. We can look at where he stopped at. These you can go to them and find these locations. Uh, this is a kind of uh, interesting chart. This basically shows when he was off, when he was moving, and when he was idling. So he was actually he had his engine on, but he was just sitting there. And we can look at the, here's the um, mileage. And you can select different things like, some people want to know what county you were in because there's different state restrictions on, uh, you know, emissions and stuff like this. And this helps with those kind of information. Events are usually ignition on and ignition off, but you can set lots of events. Like I said earlier, EMS trucks actually have events for when you actually turn the lights and sirens on. So they can keep a tab on exactly what was happening on the vehicle. Messages would be things like that you send to the vehicle or the vehicle sends back to you. Your drivers can send a thing saying, you know, going off, um, you know, taxi drivers are going off duty. And that could be a message you could see in here. Speeds are set uh, basically if you have a, if you want to know the speed that this person dro drove at. So uh, this one's a slow vehicle. So and then relative speed or absolute speed, you can set that in in this. Geofences, you know, you can set up little parameter fences around the vehicle and, and see when it entered and when it exited those areas. Sensors, analogs, and monitors. I'll be going into more detail about how to do maintenance stuff when I get over here into the settings. And then there's uh, states are requiring more and more regulatory uh, reports on your uh, vehicles, and that's what this tab is for. So that's basically it. Um, there's a lot you can see from a track. Uh, you know, you can see what the person uh, was doing with the vehicle and where they were at. And, you know, you can slide this around and see what they were doing the next portion of time. And this, you know, allows you to go in and, and see exactly what was happening to your vehicle when in history. So some people want to know where it's at now. Some people want to know where it's been, and it just depends on your application. Anyway, so that's all I had for this um, portion, and uh, I want to look at um, see if we can get uh, my Android um, video capture to work out, and see if I can sit that add that to the end of this.
Thank you very much.